How's it going, you guys? So I'm out here right now just taking a walk out in this beautiful weather. And interestingly enough, I live in Texas about two hours ago. It was actually kind of rainy and gloomy. And the weather definitely wasn't so beautiful at that time. Um, but nonetheless, I wanted to make a quick video talking a little bit more about some of the benefits of exercise. Um, not because people don't know it. I mean, the majority of the most substantial benefits of exercise people are hit over the head with on a regular basis and pretty much everybody already knows the basic benefits of exercise. But I think that most people take the most substantial benefits for granted. And the fact is, um, there's many leading experts who make this claim and I strongly believe in it, that exercise is pretty much the most powerful remedy for all diseases, even independent of diet. Um, not just a remedy for diseases, but it's almost like a super pill um, that can provide many effects to optimize your well-being and optimize your life outside of disease states, even if you're healthy it could still improve your life by 10 times. And so, many of the leading experts on exercise and the benefits of exercise, they basically say, if you could stuff exercise in a pill, right, um, and, provi and make a pill that provides all of the same benefits as um, exercise, I mean, you'd be working with, like, the most magical pill on the planet. Like, the one magic pill that can successfully remedy and improve symptoms and conditions um, of all kinds would be exercise. It's amazing. So, um, I've made many videos on exercise for mental health and exercise and its effects on brain-derived neurotropic factor. Um... So look up my channel name and exercise and the word exercise if you're interested in finding those videos. So basically, let's just uh, give a summary. So obviously the first one I've already mentioned is that exercise can boost brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is a neuropeptide, a chemical in your brain that is responsible for essentially organizing the filing cabinet um, that is your memories, your scattered thoughts, and your problems in life. Brain-derived neurotropic factor is a peptide that basically improves all the neurochemistry that supports sorting these things out. So typically somebody has some type of life problem or something like that, right? And they feel all the cortisol and they feel all the stress. Well, when you go out for a run, especially after about 40, 40 the 40 minute mark, okay? And this could even be vigorous walking, depending on your current level of fitness. You go out on a 40-minute run or jog or walk, and after about 30 minutes, you start to feel, you start to notice like your thoughts being more positive, more optimistic, and um, you start to notice you're sorting out all the problems that you were stressed about previously. Um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick has mentioned this before in one of her podcasts with Joe Rogan. And anybody who's actually tried this or done this, most people unfortunately can't get past like 15 minutes, but if you just force yourself to just get moving for 40 minutes consistently, even if it's just walking, I'm at about almost 30, 30 minutes now of just walking. And um, typically I'll go for runs and things, but this walk still benefits my brain in that way. And so I think most people will find a very similar effect. And then of course, after you vigor, you've exercised vigorously enough for your fitness level, which is m better at a moderate tempo, um, you start to just feel more positive, obviously. You feel a, a high almost. So exercise has actually been found to be even more beneficial, more, it's had a, um, a greater improvement on mental health symptoms and antidepressants. I believe it was uh, pitted up against Prozac in an intervention trial. And obviously, um, exercise is more effective in treating depression and anxiety than 
placebo by substantial degrees. But even when pitted up against some of the most powerful antidepressants and anti-anxiolytic drugs, exercise stacks up to be a powerhouse. And there is, and that is a, a huge reason why exercise is pushed so strongly, um, even among psychologists who are more so um, interested in prescribing drugs. I remember when I was a kid and I had like a psychiatrist or a psychologist, whichever one deals with pharmaceuticals, I forget right now. He would always ask me how much I'd exercise. Um, everybody knows how important it is. And when you look at the intervention trials, there's no, there's no question why. So, um, obviously exercise increases the efficiency of oxygen throughout the body, not only to the heart, but to the brain as well. And so that will provide you with greater circulation to the brain, which means better moods, uh, better functioning cognitively. And um, on top of that, you're boosting your cardiovascular function by through many direct and indirect mechanisms. One of which is um, allowing the allowing the uh, your cardiovascular system to expand. So um, you're putting your cardiovascular system under stress, and so it's adapting to be able to deal with more stress. Um, when you train anaerobically, that's without oxygen. Um, you're tra you're training your body to be able to be more efficient at handling circulation and or handling stress under conditions of lower oxygen okay and so a lot of times you know like for example just recently there was a big steroided bodybuilder uh, his name was john meadows who had a heart attack and of course the heart attack was probably heavily influenced by his steroid abuse but Doctors said the reason why he survived is because of his low intensity cardiovascular routine that he was doing year round. So doctors, even doctors who are more so trying to push statin drugs, they even acknowledge the protective benefit of cardiovascular exercise and exercise in general on um, the prevention and the protection of severity of heart attacks and heart related heart related problems um, but essentially as far as I understand it um, depending on the type of exercise you do you can increase the capacity of boosting nitric oxide and the efficiency of nitric oxide in general in the body more nitric oxide means greater cardiovascular health um, and also it's um, dilation, enhancing the dilation and the, the wideness of the arteries, if that's an easier way to put it, I suppose. Um, and so essentially exercise has a hormetic effect that makes the body stronger, that makes the cardiovascular system stronger. Um, and also, improves the efficiency of oxygenation throughout the body and increases the efficiency of cognitive function. And so the other thing that people need to kind of contemplate is the fact that exercise is an essential nutrient. That's the way I like to look at it because pretty much um, the majority of human evolution consisted of vigorous sprinting to catch, well actually sprinting to run away from threats first of all. So whenever we had the fight or flight response, you know, the stress response from a threat, our body would light up with stress hormones and um, provide blood flow to the extremities, like your feet and your hands and whatnot, so that you could either fight the threat or run away from it. And so it's no surprise that when we exercise, we relieve stress, um, we boost endorphins, which are chemicals involved in relieving pain, both mental pain and physical pain. Um, and then it also produces neuropeptides, things like brain-derived neurotropic factor that are involved in sorting stressful situations out. And so we have a developed, we've evolved over millions of years to develop biological, biological mechanisms that exercise 
stimulates in order to handle stress. And so, you know, pretty much every single disease that's been identified, maybe except for autoimmune illness, but even infectious illness, um, there is a positive correlation involved and in mechanistic data that shows exercise increases or improves outcomes. And obviously prevention of these diseases as well. I mean, that's a given. But it's not just, you know, oh, like weight loss. It's not just one mechanism. There's a multitude of mechanisms in which it acts upon to induce this effect. I haven't even mentioned weight loss. Um, now, that's not to say that fat loss is not relevant because um, one of my best friends, actually, the one I just interviewed recently on his uh, story, putting cancer into remission on a ketogenic diet, um, he was telling me how when he was at his heaviest, or actually he showed me lab results where when he was at his heaviest, um, his, he had low testosterone. And then just by decreasing his body fat by like 200 pounds, he doubled his free testosterone and total testosterone. And so reducing body fat has a plays a substantial role on overall health as well at the hormonal level. And obviously exercising vigorously is going to definitely decrease fat mass. And if you're doing it properly, it will also increase your lean mass, which is what you really want. And also your bone mass. Um, a lot of people, they just think total weight loss is a good thing, but if that weight loss consists of bone and lean mass at the same time, then that's an overall net negative. You know, you probably would, should aim to be, have more muscle, more bone density, and lose body fat, but more bone density is always a good thing because you don't want to be uh, risking bone fractures and, and falling and fracturing a hip when at an older age, since that is one of the most um, common causes of mortality after the age of 65. So obviously with a properly structured exercise routine, you can definitely prevent that. So, I mean, I mean, the list just goes on and on. I mean, we know that mortality is, so we have greater mortality in people with less muscle mass past the age of 65, a greater risk of falling and fracturing a bone and dying of bone fracture related complications past the age of 65. Um, and then of course, exercise helps to prevent all of the comorbidities and other things that are involved in dying past that age, such as cardiovascular disease, Exercise improves insulin sensitivity, so allowing you to prevent and or treat diabetes um, and <laughs> positively affecting your neurochemistry to prevent and or improve the symptoms of many different mental illnesses. Um, I've seen stories of people who combined uh, basically caloric restriction and a proper exercise routine who have According to the doctors, reverse their diabetes. Now, for me personally, I have a different perspective on diagnosing and testing diabetes in which this person might not be considered um, a full reversal. But nonetheless, that just goes to show you how powerful exercise actually is. So, uh, what are my recommendations for exercise? to obtain all these benefits. So for the full scope of benefits that I've talked about so far, and I haven't even hit the surface with all of them. There's so many, you know, improving immunity and killer T cells, um, the list goes on. So my recommendations, like you're gonna have to hit the full scope of energy systems in order to really get all of these benefits. but. You know, for most people, small improvements make a huge difference. So like, if you're just sedentary and not really doing much, going out for a walk at, you know, as, as often as you can and for as long as you can, is gonna make a huge difference. If you can go out for a 40 minute walk five times a week, I mean, you're on the way, you're on your way to uh, making big changes just with that, believe it or not. And the thing is, don't look at it in terms of calories. If you look at it in terms of calories burnt, then you're taking for granted the majority of all these benefits I mentioned. Just because a walk doesn't burn many calories 
doesn't mean it's, it's a waste of time. That's a foolish way to look at it. And, if you, and that's probably the reason why so many people just don't even use nutrition or exercise at all. It's because they're just looking at it in terms of weight loss and calories. But if you go for a walk 40 minutes a day, you know, even just three times a week, compared to when you were sedentary, you're gonna to start to notice your, your mental clarity improve, your stress levels will lower, your sleep will become better. Even by a small degree, it'll make a big impact over time. And you should notice that you start to lose weight after a while, but the biggest benefits are all obviously the mental benefits and the uh, how you feel in your body, an increased sense of well-being, you just feel healthier. After the first, after the first walk, you should notice a slight increase in endorphins for a 40 minute walk. Now, 60 minute walk, you'll definitely feel some great benefits, especially increased circulation and the oxygenation of the body. Now for me, if I was gonna recommend an ideal program, I mean, it's gonna depend on your fitness level, but the way I see it, it would be, you know, at least three times a week. Um, okay, so let's see. I would say three days a week, you know, let's say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, you do a, a proper strength training routine, okay? And that would mean maybe a three by five, okay? Maybe a three by five or a five, three, one type of uh, strength routine, okay? And this is basically a powerlifting routine. And it doesn't matter if you're a woman or you're an older person or any of that, okay? Like, you're not gonna get bulky, you're not gonna look like a bodybuilder, and you're not gonna hurt yourself as long as you have proper form and as long as you're not, you know, training at an intensity that your body can't handle yet. The, the key here is training in, you know, sets of five, sets of three, sets of one, so that you increase your body's overall maxim, maximum ability to produce force and for your muscles and tendons to be able to build strength to resist force. So, you know, if you want to build muscle, um, if you want to build bone density, you want to build your ligaments and your tendons, and you want to, you know, build an overall vigorous and strong frame to be able to sustain your uh, exercise moving forward, you need to build the exact frame that you're going to be exercising on. Like a lot of people talk about how they get knee pain from running. Well, part of that's your running form. The other part of that is muscular imbalances, but a big part of that is you have weak tendons, you have weak um, ligaments, you have weak joints, and you have a weak body. And so the only way to increase that is by building a foundation of strength. And you do that through a progressive overload scheme using five, three, one, or three sets of five, three sets of three, five sets of one over time. And there's many different ways, but the key here is a basic beginner's powerlifting routine, you know, three days a week with proper um, recovery in between. And then on top of that, you can add like a basic um, bodybuilding routine just to increase your muscle mass and to get a good pump, to get a good, get some good um, anaerobic exercise on top of that. So for example, Monday you do squat, Wednesday you do bench press, Friday you do deadlift, right? On your squat day, you can do lunges, you can do step ups, you can do other um, leg hypertrophy type of movements. Wednesday, you can do um, overhead press, dumbbell flies, and all those, and curls, and rows, and all that stuff on top of your bench press routine. And then Friday, after deadlifts, you can do rows if you'd like on that day. You could do um, lower back exercises and things as accessories. The key here is building strength um, in your ligaments, your tendons, your bones, building bone mass, bone density. And, you're, and building the resistance to force so that, you know, if you fall or if a box, if, you're pick, if a box lands on you or something, you build to resist that force so you don't injure yourself when you're getting older, or just in general. Um, and so on top of that, you know, you can throw some uh, high intensity interval training. You could use weights for that, or you could do like um, uh, circuits and things, or you can do things like burpees. Uh, Turkish get-ups and whatnot, and you just do high volume, higher reps and things, and that will build the, um, you know, if you do high intensity interval training of any kind, sprint intervals, weight training intervals, you name it, 
um, that's going to give you a good mix of both strength and uh, you're going to be building the, the sprinting energy system. Uh, the glycotic system at around the three, three minute mark, depending on how you set it up. You'll be getting all the endurance benefits and all the cognitive benefits. You'll be getting all of these benefits from high intensity interval training. It's the best of, all, of both worlds. If you, if you do high intensity interval training using weights and using cardio sprints and things, sprint intervals, um, bicycle intervals, you name it, that's the most efficient use of your time. Just 30 minutes of high intensity interval training anywhere from three to five days a week. If you set it up right, I mean, the benefits of that are just amazing and it's so efficient. You don't really need to be exercising more than an hour a day in order to get the benefits. And that's why I like high intensity interval training. And I think if you put the 30 minutes of, I mean, even 15 minutes of high intensity interval training on top of a basic strength training routine, you're already getting like all of these benefits I mentioned to a certain degree. But I think it's important to have like a, a lower intensity exercise routine that builds that, that upper end of, of um, distance and endurance and steady state. And that could be walking for 60 minutes a day or walking for 30 minutes a day. Just something that you can do on days where you feel lazy, but you just get your body moving, you get your mind going, you get the blood pumping. Because how you feel before you exercise, how you feel before you exercise is light years different from how you're going to feel when you're done, right? Like you wake up in the morning and you feel like you don't even want to wake up. You feel so tired. You feel so lazy. If you just go for a for a 30 minute walk, you will feel so much more awake and refreshed. And I found through this quarantine thing right now that um, coffee doesn't really like wake me up. It just kind of produces stress hormones. I found even caffeine pills doesn't do that. Herbs don't really do that. Um, even you know music to a certain extent doesn't do that. The only thing that really wakes me up and gets me motivated and gets me energized is actually just moving my body and. I think that's true for pretty much everyone, but most people, they don't know it, and so they never try it, and so they don't realize it, and so they just think, oh, I just feel, I feel lazy, therefore I should not work out, because I just don't feel like it. But what you don't realize is, you are not going to feel like working out until you start, <laughs> and, and, and when you get moving, then your body is like, okay, I want to keep moving. And I believe that's a, also a principle of physics, an object that, that um, an object in motion stays in motion. And I've definitely found that to be 100% uh, accurate when it comes to motivating yourself to exercise. Um, yeah, so that's why it's important to have some type of low intensity exercise, you know, that you could do every day if you wanted to, you know, 30 minutes of cardio a day. You know, just walking, jogging, light bicycling, dancing, whatever it is. Get your body moving. And I mean actually moving, you know. Even if it's just a walk outside, it's even better. Get your body moving. And get your head off the, off the cell phone, too. Try not to be watching YouTube or anything like that. Unless it's my videos, of course, while you're doing this cardio. I mean, you could, actually. It's moving, moving with YouTube is better than not moving at all. Let's get your ass moving though. So high intensity interval training two to five days a week, um, you know, which means like, you know, you do sprinting circuit, sprinting intervals where you sprint for 20 seconds, rest for a minute, you know, do that 10 times at a time. You can do um, 20 burpees, rest, 20 burpees, rest. You do, uh, you know, max effort push up. I mean, you can do the simplest things or you can use weights. You can do you know, lat pull downs, sets of 20, mix it with bicep curls, sets of 20, um, mix it with uh, body weight squat, squat, sets of 20, and then rest, and just repeat that over and over again for 30 minutes. You make an amazing workout that can build strength, it can build cardio, it can improve your mental focus, and all of these things all at the same time, uh, just by doing that. Um, but the key is, you know, staying moving on a regular basis and uh, even if it's light intensity, you know, building the, the, the maximum strength using powerlifting, um, even if you're old and fragile, 
Um, you don't have to be lifting heavy. Just be, you know, putting your body under some kind of load using the basic movements that build functional strength. It's the foundation for everything. You know, um, sprinting, sprinting power and speed is built off of squats and lunges. Um, I mean, you can literally build speed, power, and jumps from squatting. You really can. It's coming from somebody who's been doing mar uh, MMA for quite some time now. Um, and so, those are the base. That's the basic foundation: is the powerlifting, building all of the strength and the um, and, and your tendons and your bones that your body is going to need so that it doesn't get injured when you're doing the sprints and the other things in the future, and to prevent injury and bone loss as you get older. Um, make sure you're eating your bone meal at the same time for the calcium. <laughs> uh, and then high intensity interval training or some type of higher volume bodybuilding to build that more medium level um, of fitness so that you're not just doing one rep maxes and not getting too, not getting enough cardio. If you do, you know, three minute circuits or something, you know, one to three minute circuits, if you're doing, you know, more bodybuilding style training or CrossFit training, that's going to really build that, that medium area where you can produce the most amount of, of um, where you can burn the most amount of glycogen, you can uh, build muscle, you can produce the most amount of, um, of cardiovascular power, let's put it that way, for a sustained period, two to three minutes, um, shorter rest period times and things like that. You're going to be getting the benefits of cardio and strength at the same time, and power and cardiovascular output. It's much different than long distance cardio and much different than the one, you know, the sets of one, the sets of five that powerlifting will have you do. Um, and then, you know, long distance jogging, long distance bicycle riding and these things. I think most people will probably get the most uh, mental benefits and heart benefits from the longer distance stuff as long as it doesn't last longer than two hours at a time. Then you're going to be risking um, heart problems at that point and dehydration and other things mostly heart problems you know atrophy of the heart and enlarged heart um, to a negative degree things of that nature so I mean this is just a basic outline with basic principles and basic recommendations and if you combine all those together I mean you're only going to be spending you know one to two hours maximum per day exercising and you're going to be getting that full scope of benefits prevention of diseases um, improving the symptoms of diseases improving your well-being um, improving mental function relieving stress sleeping better like your whole life will literally change from this habit you know a lot of people they're like they feel like it's not worth the time like you would probably only be spending an hour an hour a day exercising um, if you really need to you know, if you really need to lower the amount, you can get away with even 30 to 45 minutes a day if you really emphasize the high intensity interval training part. High intensity interval training is a magic hack because it allows you to get most of these benefits at the most, um, the most uh, efficiency with the little amount, the littlest amount of time. And so, eat like a, a basic CrossFit workout, you know, and then if you just throw some squats in there, you know, and then maybe some jog, a jog or a bicycle ride every now and then when you have the time, I mean, that's perfect right there. You know, probably the most effective workout routine really doesn't require more than an hour a day. So, yeah, uh, for further information, definitely ask questions in the comments down below. Hit me up on Instagram. And I'll be happy to talk more about it because I'm just giving general information here, um, not specific recommendations, despite the fact that I've been a personal trainer since 2014, really since 2013, that was before I got certified. So first certification was January 2014, something like that. So yeah, lots and lots of questions to be asked and things to become more detailed on. So, leave your question, comments down below, subscribe for more awesome content like this, and I'll talk to you all next time.